Amid stalling global growth, Prime Minister Li Xinlong will join fellow leaders at the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation APEC Forum this week to discuss ways to revive trade, shore up supply chains and boost prospects for a sustainable and equitable future. The annual meeting of the grouping's 21 member economies will also feature several highly anticipated meetings on the sidelines, including one between United States President Joe Biden and his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping as they try to find common ground amid heightening geopolitical rivalry between their countries. In the course of his six-day working visit from Monday, PM Lee will hold bilateral meetings with other leaders converging on San Francisco for the summit, said a statement from the Prime Minister's Office PMO. The Prime Ministers of Australia, Japan and Malaysia, as well as the Presidents of Indonesia, the Philippines and South Korea, are among the leaders attending the event. In addition, PM Lee will meet California Governor Gavin Newsom, Alphabet Chief Executive Sundar Pichai, Apple CEO Tim Cook and other prominent corporate chieftains. PM Lee will also launch Enterprise Singapore's San Francisco Overseas Center. Meant to support a growing number of Singapore companies seeking a footing in the world's largest economy, which is exhibiting surprisingly strong growth. Another highlight of PM Lee's trip will be a meeting with Singaporeans residing in the San Francisco Bay Area. He will be accompanied by Foreign Minister Vivian Balakrishnan and senior officials from the PMO, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Ministry of Trade and Industry. During his absence, Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister Lawrence Wong will be acting Prime Minister, the PMO statement said. APEC members make up around 40% of the world's population. 50% of global trade and 60% of the world's gross domestic product. The November 11 to 17 event kicked off with preparatory meetings between officials and ministers. Before the finale, the APEC economic leaders meeting on Thursday and Friday, during which a joint declaration is expected. Only modest progress is expected at what will be the most carefully choreographed encounter between the leaders of the world's two most powerful economies on Wednesday. It will be Mr. Xi's first visit to the U.S. since 2017 and only the leaders' second meeting during the Biden presidency. If they agree to restore military ties, inactive since Beijing suspended communication in 2022 to protest against then-U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan. It will count as an achievement. Other possibilities are beefing up travel and people-to-people -people ties. The U.S. is keen to get China's help in resolving an opiate crisis that is a leading cause of death among young Americans. It says large quantities of fentanyl, a highly potent synthetic opiate with a potency 50 times that of heroin, are being produced in China and brought illegally to the U.S. China, for its part, may seek some assurances from the U.S. on Taiwan, given its anxieties surrounding the self-governed island's presidential election in January. U.S. restrictions on technology transfer to China and tensions over Beijing's territorial claims in the South China and East China Seas will also be discussed. Repairing the fractured ties is critical for the two superpowers, said Professor Yuan Yuan Ong, a Singaporean scholar of U.S.-China relations. For Xi, easing tensions with the U.S. is critical for China's economic recovery. Said Professor Ong, the Alfred Chandler Chair of Political Economy at Johns Hopkins University. Biden also feels the need to recalibrate U.S. policy towards China. His administration doesn't want to be bundled with loud, irrationally hawkish voices in Washington and inadvertently let them set the official tone. It wants to articulate a vigilant and practical position on China, she said. Although not on the official agenda, 
The month-long Gaza conflict and the 20-month old war in Ukraine are certain to be discussed among the APEC leaders. Dr. Victor Cha, Senior Vice President for Asia at the Washington-based Center for Strategic and International Studies, said, whether there'll be a statement on these issues remains to be seen. I'm sure it's being worked on, but there are disagreements. What we might see is smaller groupings of like-minded countries that may make statements on this. Among others, Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim and Indonesian President Joko Widodo might make clear their disagreement with Washington on its policy of backing Israel in the conflict and holding back from calling for a ceasefire. China's role may be critical, but it is yet to significantly exert its substantial influence on Iran, a key backer of Hamas. The Palestinian Militant Organization, which runs Gaza, on October 7, launched an attack which took 1,200 Israeli lives. Palestinian officials say more than 11,000 Gaza residents have been killed in air and artillery strikes since October 7. The U.S. is likely to seek Chinese help in preventing the conflict from spiraling, their interests in the Middle East are not at cross-purposes. As a large oil and gas buyer, China would prefer stability in the zone. The U.S. shift away from championing trade liberalization has caused a reaction in Southeast Asia's export-led economies, which look for better access to the U.S. market. The question is whether a key Biden initiative underway can make up for the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The ambitious free trade deal, spiked by the Trump administration. Mr. Biden's two-year-old project, the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity IPF, is intended to anchor U.S. economic engagement in the region. And it includes India, a non-APEC member. Working on the sidelines of APEC, negotiators are rushing to announce progress on EPAF's four pillars, trade connected economy, supply chains resilient economy, clean energy, decarbonization and infrastructure clean economy, as well as tax and anti-corruption, fair economy. Announcements are expected on clean and fair economy, while agreement on the resilient component was reached in September. Trade is the major sticking point. We can expect an early harvest agreement, with some areas substantially concluded, some registering substantial progress, and others requiring more work, said veteran U.S. trade negotiator Wendy Cutler. It has become more complicated for the U.S. to achieve its goals in areas like labor and the environment without offering market access. She added, referring to the resistance from many nations to U.S. demands for labor and environmental standards in trade. As a result, the IPEF outcomes announced are likely to be more limited than initially expected when the talks were launched. Ms. Cutler, vice president of the Asia Society Policy Institute, also said the evolution of APEC was consistent with the changing environment. The economic challenges facing APEC economies today go away beyond the need for further trade and investment liberalization. So it's only natural that APEC's focus has evolved over the years. The U.S. emphasis in 2023 on connectivity, sustainability and resiliency go right to the heart of the challenges APEC economies are grappling with today. She noted. The deliverables are expected to be announced in each of these areas, she added. The APEC leaders' joint declaration, still under negotiation, will underscore the progress made on strategic and economic goals.